Welcome to Developer Highlights number six. With me today, I have Petko. How are you? I'm good. Thanks. Excited to be here. Excited to have you on. You've been working with uh, Matchstick, a unit testing framework for, for the graph. Yeah, so I, I started working at Langchain um, about five months ago. And at the same time that I started there, uh, they started working with the graph. So you can say that was a pretty, a pretty nice moment to jump in. Limechain is a um, blockchain development uh, firm, and basically uh, we offer services to um, smaller uh, individuals uh, in the space as well as other bigger firms. And basically, uh, you can reach out to Limechain for anything from uh, advice for your blockchain app to uh, scoping and realizing a MVP, all the way to creating um, a full product. Um, so yeah, once I started at Limechain, we immediately started working on the, um, Matchstick, as you said. And Matchstick is a unit testing framework for the graph. And what that basically means is um, using Matchstick, you can write unit tests for your subgraph, which means uh, that you write unit tests for the mapping logic, because essentially that's the most important bits uh, in a subgraph. Well, one of the most important bits is the mapping functions, which, you know, get the events or blocks or functions and um, transform them. They store the data. Uh, I guess most of the subgraph developers already know this. I mean, when I started working on this, I didn't know anything about subgraph development. So I had to learn that as well as try to uh, understand how we can create this unit testing framework. But for now, it's been really fun. And uh, I should mention that the whole graph community have been really welcoming and really uh, helpful when we had issues understanding things. Um, so yeah, I can just share my screen to show you the documentation and everything. Cool, so uh, this is our GitHub repository and our documentation is um, over here down in the readme. Um, I'm not gonna be going through the documentation, although it's not much because right now, uh, what you can do with the framework is sort of not much, but uh, we think that it's, uh, everything that you would need to successfully try out your mapping logic. Uh, and by the way, I should say that the whole idea for Matchstick uh, was because um, right now, if a subgraph developer wants to just try something out uh, in their mapping logic, they need to um, deploy their, their subgraph, wait for it to sync and all that, just to then check the logs and see if everything's okay or what happened, what went wrong. And um, as we know, with some subgraphs, this can take a really long time. For instance, the uh, Uniswap version two subgraph uh, takes a, a bit more than a month to sync, which is a insane amount of time to have to wait to just see if your fix worked. And um, of course, that doesn't mean that their subgraph is bad. It's a, it's a very nice subgraph, but it's just a big one and it handles a lot of data. So that's normal. Um, but when you're using Matchstick, you can just run your mapping logic against a sort of mocked store, which exists uh, only for you locally. So it's not getting stored in a database. It's not actually going to the graph node, um, but it runs locally. And that's why it's, it's really fast. So <clears throat> I have prepared here a demo subgraph. Um, which is really, really simple because I just want to highlight sort of the flow of using Matchstick. And I think that this can then be used in much bigger subgraphs uh, in pretty much the same way. So we have a demo subgraph here. Uh, let me just show you the data sources. It's just one data source. It's a local data source called my data source, and it holds exactly one uh, entity. It has one ABI and only one event with one event handler. It's really simple just to illustrate how this works. And by the way, this address is not a real address because I just have everything locally over here. Um, here, you can actually see you have one example event, which is pretty much just an event for um, when a new uh, entity is made, this event gets emitted. So again, really simple. <coughs> Sorry. And um, over here in the mapping uh, file, we just have one handler, which takes an event, creates a uh, entity using the name that it gets from the event. 
uh, and it has, no, sorry, using the ID that it gets from the event. And it also has a name field, which is just a string. And again, we're getting that from the event. And at the end of the handler function, it just gets saved to the store. And essentially, I think that this is going to be enough to sort of show off Matchstick because uh, pretty much all of the handler functions, at least for events, they pretty much work in the same way, right? You would you would create a new uh, entity, then you would do all sorts of things. Now here, you can do a lot of things, um, but at the end of the day, you're just saving it uh, into the store at the end. So right now, we're just saving the name. So uh, if I were a sort of graph developer and just wanted to try this out really quick, I would use Matchstick. Now, let me go back to the documentation. I'm going to scroll down to the uh, installation bit. And since I'm on a Mac, I'm going to use this uh, script. So over here in the project, I'm just going to run this. And what that script will do is it will go and it will fetch the latest release binary. There it is. Uh, and by the way, um, we really want to sort of add Matchstick to Graph CLI. So this step might not be needed in the future because what we really want in the future is, um, and this is not going to work now, but in the future, the subgraph developers will just be able to say graph test and then the name of the data source, which is going to be really awesome. And we expect that to be ready in a few weeks time. But for now, with the script that I showed you from GitHub. Um, that's just going to download the matchstick binary locally. Here it is. And this is just a Rust binary, but you don't need to know anything about Rust to use matchstick. So the binary is, is here. And now what I can do is, well, we're going to be just calling the binary like this. So matchstick, and then with the name of the data source. But we're not quite ready to do that yet. So. Um, we also need one other bit. Let me just drag this here. Uh, we have a NPM module that is just sort of a helper module because right now um, the matchstick binary has no way to read our mapping functions. But this, this little uh, NPM package basically does that work for us. It sort of adds our mapping logic to matchstick or adds matchstick to the mapping code. So um, I'm just going to run yarn add matchstick AS. Uh, that should be done soon. Cool. So yeah, I think we have it installed. Let me check in the package JSON. Yeah, there it is. By the way, I have not tried this with the latest version of matchstick AS, so um, it'll be interesting. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, so once this is, um, once we have Matchstick AS installed, we can just go to uh, the source folder. And what I like to do is just create a new directory and then have my uh, files inside. So if this file is called example, I'm just going to call this example test TS, which is just a normal file, but it changes the uh, image here. So you know that uh, it's a test, which is pretty cool. So what we're going to do is we're just going to import uh, matchstick is and, and by the way i really wanted this to be like a re real live demo just so it can be absolutely clear what i'm doing oh but that was kind of stupid i'm importing things from matchstick as and we need to go into assembly folder index so this is basically our import now we're going to be importing a few things but let's just start with test which is just going to be the function for defining our blocks. Now, this bit here is really important for now. Um, from this file, we need to export a function which has to be named run tests. Now, it's important for it to be run like this because uh, the matchstick binary goes in and searches for a function with this name. Um, in the future, we hope that this can be simplified a bit. But for now, just rule of thumb, naming this function like this. Uh, and inside, we can actually do test. And this is just a normal function. The first argument is the name of the test. So I can just say simple test or something. Uh, and the second one accepts a function, which is really um, the function that we need. So here in the test block, um, we are going to instantiate our uh, 
entity, uh, I mean our event, sorry. So we're gonna instantiate our event and we're gonna say it is a new customer event. Oh, sorry, customer event. It's a new custom entity, which is a event for each time there is a new entity. I know these things can be uh, a bit weird, but yeah, and we have to import that from the generated folder as I'm sure the subgraph developers uh, know where all this is stored because it, it, it essentially uh, goes through the data source and then generates this event for us. Um, so after that, we are going to load this event up with some data and I'm not gonna do that manually just because it's um, a lot of data, but essentially, and I'm gonna explain what all of this is. Uh, we need to import Ethereum from GraphTS. So what we're doing here is we are defining our custom event because in that event, we can have all the data in the world that we need later in the mapping functions. And um, because let me just show you the handler function again, but in this scenario, we only need the ID and the name. Uh, but of course this event can be really big and it, it, it'll have a lot of fields. And so all of the required fields have to be instantiated here. Now, how are we doing that? We're just defining a new event. We are adding an empty array for the event parameters. Um, and then we're just loading the event parameters. So we're loading the ID, we're setting its value to be 434, uh, and then we're loading the name parameter to be Don Draper. I'm sure if if your um, if your watchers have watched Mad Men, they will get this reference. But even if uh, they haven't, it's just a random string here for the name. And what we need to do then is to add these parameters to the event. I hope this is kind of straightforward. It's it's a bit weird to actually be instantiating events like this, but this is the only way that you can really mock an event. And it's, it's not that verbose. So what do we have now? We have a event uh, in which we have loaded all of the data that we need. And here is the important bit really. Um, let me just, I can just add some comments saying that this is uh, instantiate a event, an event. And then we will call handlers, which is the most important point of matchstick after all. So over here, this function, handle uh, new custom entity. I will just bring that in. I think it'll be easier if I just write it over here and then it's gonna want me to import it. So we are importing the handler from mappings example and we're passing in the event. And that's it really. So when, you, when we call the handler function with the event, it's gonna run all of the logic in the handler on the event and it's just gonna save the event um, in the end. Um, but now, so how can we be sure that the handler has actually done its job? Well, we can then assert on the store. So for instance, we can say, let me just get this over here. So assert is a class that we're gonna be bringing from matchstick AS as well. So we, we're bringing in assert and we're calling assert field equals. And that lets us um, specify a field on a uh, entity in the store. And then we can assert that that field equals what we want it to uh, equal to. And it's really easy if we just read the uh, arguments. So we want an entity of type custom entity, whatever type our entity is, and the ID because the ID and the entity type will all, always be a unique combination. Um, and then when we get that entity, we specify the name of the field that we want to assert on. And then we specify the value that we expect that field to have. And it's that simple. And at the end, we can do something that is not needed, but we can just call a uh, clear store to remove everything from the store before we write our next uh, assertions and test blocks. Um, but we need to import that as well. And again, we just import it from matchstick AS. And there we have it basically, this is our first unit test. Now, 
we need to import the run tests function inside of the mapping file. It's really easy. We just do um, import run tests from test example test. Yeah, it even called it, but not import. We need to export it. There it is. So this line is very important to not forget, but th this is basically the line that is responsible to add the unit tests. So to wire the unit tests to the mapping file, because then the whole thing gets converted to WASM and goes into graph node normally. But right now we're not going to send it to graph node. We're going to send it to the matchstick binary. So how we do that, we basically do matchstick. This is the binary that we've installed. Ah, almost forgot. We first have to do graph build. And we can just say graph build and matchstick, and then the name of our data source. Now, I'm sure most of your viewers know, but uh, the data source name is whatever is listed here. Basically, it's just on the name key. So we're going to do my data source. And we're going to run that. And let's hope it works. Ah, it's not building. So let's see why. Um, ah, run test ex ex expects a type, of course. Sorry. I haven't, I haven't got my linter uh, here. But run tests is a void function because it's not actually returning anything. So let's try again. So there it is. The build is complete. And then we get this little cool uh, ASCII matchstick igniting tests. Simple test, which is the name of our test over here. It, bas it basically worked. So that means that um, an entity with this type and this ID has a name field, which equals Don Draper. Now, if we say that this we want this to be equal to Ted or something, which is obviously not the case, we have to run graph build and match stick again. Uh, it should be pretty fast. Uh, there it is. So simple test failed because uh, expected field name to equal Ted, but it was Don Draper. So we sort of we tried to do our best to uh, make these um, error messages as verbose and detailed as we can get, um, just so that when something goes wrong, the Supergraph developer can spot it right away, basically. But yeah, that, that's it um, on the first test. Now I can just show you a bit more functionality that, um, that can be done in Matchstick. For instance, we can say, let's just say second test. Sometimes you will not want to just be, start off with a store that uh, hasn't got anything in it. Um, you can load a bunch of things in the store uh, and then run the handlers just to see how that will, will work. So I'm just going to paste a bit of code here. Uh, so we are just creating our uh, entity this time. We're not creating an event, but we're creating the entity itself. Uh, I'm just going to show where I'm importing these things from. But yeah, we're just importing the entity from generated schema, as you would do in a normal mapping file. And we are importing value from GraphTS. Yes. So what we're doing here is basically we are creating the new entity with this ID and we are setting its name right away. So it's not going through the handler functions, but we're just brute forcing a name on it and we are calling entity.save. So this way we can just load a bunch of things in the store and we can start off with that information in the store and then call mapping functions and do all of the assertions that we want. So let me just run this to make sure that that works. <clears throat> yep, there it is. Simple test and second test passed. Um, again, if I mistype something here, it's not going to work. But I already showed that. So maybe I can show you a bit of other things that it can fail. For instance, if I mistype the ID, it should say that there is no entity with this type and this ID. Yeah, no entity with this type and this ID found. Um, so this is another thing that you can use matchstick for. Cool. Uh, so now we're going to move on to a bit more advanced um, functionalities of matchstick. But for that, I'm just going to check out on the main branch. Uh, I can't do that, obviously. But if I uh, remove everything I did so far, Cool. So we are on main and we have a bunch of other 
data sources on main that we are uh, trying things out. And by the way, this demo subgraph is uh, on GitHub. It's basically meant to showcase everything that you can do in Matchstick. So just feel free to check out this repository for all sorts of uh, examples. So over here, I'm just briefly going to go through these mappings. Um, so here is pretty much basically what we just showed with the example. It's just a uh, entity. Uh, no, sorry, it's a, what is this? Yeah, it's a uh, entity. We are setting some of its uh, fields over here and we are saving the entity. Um, this function here basically shows how you can do that on multiple uh, entities at the same time. So if you don't want to call handle new uh, entity, the handle new event each time, you can just have a uh, one function that takes an array of events and just handle all of those events simultaneously if you have a lot of events in your um, subgraph. Um, another thing that it's it's really that was really important to have is uh, mocking smart contract functions because they are used a lot inside of subgraphs. So you would um, actually get a smart contract, use a function on it, and then use the return value in your mappings. That is something that we know that is used a lot. So you can actually use Matchstick to mock functions. So you can just mock what the function returns. Let me just um, find a test case. Obviously, that will be in the tests. So first, you would need to import create mocked function, which is, again, just imported from match the KS. And how that is used. So you would call create mocked function, and you would pass in a few um, parameters. So the first one is the address of the smart contract, because you can have different smart contracts with the same function names inside, right? So you would need to specify the exact address of the smart contract. Then you specify the name of the function and then the function signature, because uh, as we know, in Solidity, you can have a bunch of functions with the same name, but with different signatures and they do different things basically. So um, yeah, you specify the address, the name and the signature. And then you do a dot with args and you specify the exact arguments because right when you call a function with let's say the number four uh, it does different things than if you call it with the number seven so you need to specify exactly which um, arguments are going to be given and then you do dot returns and you specify what the function returns so in this little example by the way this is wrong because it it should return a string so the function signature is string and the uh so that yeah the result value is a string and the input value also should be a string because um over here we are giving it arguments and we're giving all of these arguments but let's just simplify things a bit because most of the time uh you would just say string string value like you, you would just have a string value which is a value from string and we can say argument one. So this is the thing that we are expecting to be passed in the function. Uh, and here in the with args method, we can just pass an array with a single element of string value. And we expect that if we call this function, func name, with this argument, it's gonna return this result. And the result is just equal to result. Um, so this is great for marking the function. And then how do we call the function? Now here, it, it's a really weird syntax, but what you would have in most subgraphs is, let me just find a better example. Oh, there it is. Okay, so this is actually a much better example, but it's pretty much um, the same logic as we just uh, shown. So we are creating a marked function. The marked function's name is uh, gravatar to owner and it takes the ID of the gravatar. I don't know if I'm saying that correctly. I think it's, yeah, gravatar. And it returns the address of the owner of that gravatar. And gravatars, I'm sure your listeners know, are just the um, images that get loaded for you when you register on a website and you don't have uh, an image. 
So, well, in some websites. And um, so we're saying this function with this name and this signature with these arguments. So we are giving it the um, ID of the gravatar, one, two, three, four. Uh, that is going to return this address. Um, then what we do is we just create an instance of the uh, smart contract, which I'm sure uh, most subgraph developers, if they've uh, worked with smart contract functions in their subgraphs, they know how this works. So you would just call the, in the uh, smart contract object, you would call dot bind, and you would specify a um, smart contract address. And then what you will do is you will do the contract dot function with arguments. Now, uh, but this isn't used a lot. What I've mostly seen is uh, try. So it would be try get gravatar, or was it gravatar to owner? Yeah. So try gravatar to owner. There it is. And we would call it with the parameter. Uh, this kind of messes up the syntax because then this is a value and we need to get the result from it, but you kind of get the idea. You can both use the try function and you can directly use the function as it is in normal subgraphs. Uh, and yeah, basically, there we go. When you call this, the function is going to return what, what you've mocked over here. And you can assert if that's true, but I think that this will mostly be used in mappings. So you would have this result and then you would have like um, entity fields and you would make that equal to the result. Uh, we've gathered some feedback from some graph developers and most of them say that, uh, that this is the way that they call smart contract functions in their mappings anyway. Um, one important bit here is you can also force a function to revert to see how your mapping logic reacts to function reverts, which is obviously something really important because if you don't handle the revert in a good way, that can cause the whole subgraph to fail. So you would have to figure that out in the mappings. Here it is. So again, you say create mocked function, and then you give it the address, the name, and the signature with arguments. Uh, you specify the exact arguments, and then you do dot reverts. And when you do this, the, when you call the function, then it will revert. So here we're just trying to call it with the arguments that we specified above, but it's it's going to fail. Um, and uh, I'm sure that the listeners know that when a function fails, it basically, so when it reverts, it returns uh, null, but if it doesn't revert, it returns the object with the result of the function call. So uh, in matchstick basically works exactly the same way, uh, but you just have to have the function mocked beforehand. So I think that's it in terms of function, uh, in terms of functions. Um, I will just want to, I just want to point another thing out. So you know how in normal mapping files, you can use, um, let's say you can do log dot, uh, info or log dot debug, I think is the most, uh, used one. Uh, you can do the same with matchstick, but you need to specify where the log function, um, is going to be imported from. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Just let me remove what I did so far. So um, let me actually run these tests. Ah, by the way, this is a quick, um, so you can you can obviously have this whole step just as a um, shell script that can run when you run this. So it, it, it's way uh, easier than having to type all this. So uh, I can just run this. Let me just make sure that our tests um, actually run and then I'm gonna demonstrate the logging yeah, so this is what it looks like when you have a bit more tests. Hopefully, all of them um, are going to be successful. Um, one thing to note that at the end of the output, it says how many tests ran in um, how many milliseconds in this case. But if you have mapping functions that do all sorts of um, weird logic with a lot of for loops and stuff, uh, it can take a bit more time. And this is useful to just sort of see um, how much time your mapping functions usually take, because as far as I know, uh, a part of how much time it takes to sync the subgraph relies on how much time it takes to run the mapping functions. So this is just something to note as well. 
I just want to show you the log function. Okay, so this is just an easy test. So I'm just going to do it here before everything else. So we can use log, but we would need to import it from match the KS. And it's a bit weirder. So we import log from match the KS assembly log. And this log um, object basically functions pretty much exactly the same way like, uh, as it does in graph node with a few um, different things that are just made for specifically for uh, matchstick. But let me actually show you over here. You can do, so you can do log dot, um, and here are all the methods you can call, but the most used one I think is log dot debug. And you can say hello from tests. <laughs> By the way, this accepts any sort of string. So for instance, this can be really useful for um, if you want to get something from the store, uh, which is already there, and you want to check if a uh, specific field on that object equals the value that you expect it to equal. So this is pretty important for that as well. Um, let me just run this again. Yeah, there it is. So below the name of the test, you actually see debug and hello from uh, the test. So this is how you can actually log things when running the tests. Another useful method um, to, worth mentioning here is when you actually want to assert that things are equal um, when you get something from the state. Let me see if we, yeah, there it is. So the assert namespace, which is the same one that we used for checking if fields are equal, we can just do assert equals. And this uh, function expects two Ethereum values, basically. So you can say um, equals value from address, and you have an address equals another address. And something for the future, because this is kind of verbose, but we are thinking to have something like um, assert um, address equals. You know, and all of these helper functions for these specific types, because it's a bit much to type all this out. Um, let me just quickly pull up this blog post. By the way, this blog post covers most of the things that we're speaking about today. So if anyone wants to check it out, I presume we can add it to the description later on. But I just wanted to show you how the different levels of logging look like. So when you call log.success, it looks like this, it's green, uh, log.error uh, looks like this. Then you got debug, info, and warning. We also have another one, which I'm just gonna show you right now because it's it's a important one. But over here, you can say log.critical, which I'm sure you're used to that from the normal mapping code as well. And you can just say boom. And what that will do is it's going to, um, basically stop everything because if you actually have a critical issue, um, it, it should stop everything because then uh, if it doesn't, you risk it, um, yeah, just having data that isn't supposed to be there. So as you can see, everything just burns, nothing is working and you get the error message boom. Um, so yeah, that's, that's a fun one as well. Um, now, another thing that I think will be useful to mention is um, sometimes when we use events in the event handlers, we depend on the uh, metadata of the events, right? So, uh, and it's a bunch of things that we can have in the metadata and all of that can be simulated in Matchstick really easily. So we just have a method called add metadata. Again, it comes from Matchstick AS and if you create um, an event. So here we are creating the base event, which is some event type. And if we want to basically wrap that event with metadata, we just do um, event equals add metadata and pass that event as a argument. And that's just going to wrap the event with metadata. And what that means is it's just going to inject a bunch of fields on it. So over here, we can read and write to the metadata fields. So we can say 
So once the event is wrapped, we can then use um, log type, for instance, we can read the log type, we can uh, change its address. And um, let me just show you quickly, because over here, we actually have examples of um, a lot of things from the metadata. So in the metadata, you can mark things like, uh, yeah, log type, um, address, block hash, um, log index, for instance, uh, and everything else you would just want to inject to the event object, you can, you can do like this. Um, then if you want to, because this will inject default metadata, but if you want to add your own values, you would just do event dot field name and you would add the updated value. We have a uh, specific channel in Discord, which is Matchstick Early Testers. Here is basically the place where um, we expect people and we want people to give feedback, complain about bugs if there are any, hopefully there aren't, but um, anything related to Matchstick can be uh, pointed out here, as well as on the repository itself. Um, over here, we have a couple of boards where so this one, which is MVP improvements, because we're already in MVP, but in here we have all of the things that we want to focus on for the next month or two. So you can just check what is uh, in the making right now. And uh, if you would want to raise anything or if you want to request a new feature or anything, you can always um, open up a new issue uh, in the repository, or you can just um, add it in the Discord chat. Thanks so much for being on, Petco. Thanks for having me. It was a blast.